this area was gonna have uncomfortable seats. So now let's talk about what makes a comfy passage. We're sailing from Papua New Guinea to Palau, give or take 1,200 nautical miles or 10 or 12 days. So we're gonna give you some tools and tips. Hope you enjoy this episode. Let's get started. It is an absolutely gorgeous morning out today. It is so beautiful. It's so calm. It looks like an all slate. is Papua New Guinea. It's the north coast of Papua New Guinea. And the thing is just covered in squalls. It's crazy. They're just piling up and causing huge thunderstorms. Every single night here in Papua New Guinea, there's lightning and thunder. It's so cool to see. It's so cool to see these microclimates. We're headed, we're headed up that way. About two days into this 10-ish day passage. And it's calm, it's really calm again. We're close to the equator and that's what happens. There's doldrums, so yeah, we're just putting pedal to the metal, man. Bought actually 10 more jerry cans. Burning the diesel. You gotta do what you gotta do to get to get across these uh, doldrums. And uh, there's logs like that one, which, which we've been avoiding. They're like big, we've hit two. Look at this thing, see that? That's a huge log. That would do serious damage. About a couple hundred miles offshore here. And there's so much crud in the water. I've hit two logs, two. Anyway, it's kind of freaky. And then there's this huge thing coming up. And I think it's just another log, but man, it's massive. It's got the whole stump. Yeah, kind of keeping it real out here, you know, a little bit interesting. Usually it's like nothing, nobody. Ben would say there's mahi under this one though, but I don't know. We'll go a little bit closer now that I'm not gonna hit it. We are just sitting out back in the coolness, trying to stay cold, cool. And uh, we were just talking about waves and swell because um, it's starting to pick up a little bit, but it's super, super comfortable. And we found out a few really cool tools that I think you guys could use, but I think we'll let Ashley talk about that. Hey Ash. <laughs> so we've just arrived here in Palau and it's been a freaking amazing passage to get here and it was a tricky passage way trickier than we usually have because of the currents it was insane insane currents typically currents don't play a huge factor in every passage we make but before we get to currents let's talk about what makes a comfy passage and that is the waves let's talk about the waves and what all the forecasts will talk about is wave period and wave height so the height is from the crest of the wave to the trough of the wave. The period is from the crest, one crest, to another. This is super important to know because all the forecasts will talk about this period and height crap and you need to know what it means. Period is measured in seconds and the height is measured either in feet or meters. But we're gonna talk about meters because that's how we roll on the HOA. So if you're in America and you really only deal with feet, it's uh, there's about three and a bit me feet in a meter. We're Canadian, we deal in meters. So now let's talk about what makes a comfy passage. A comfy passage is when the period, this part from here to here, is two times, at least two times the wave height. However, we prefer it when it's three times. This is the Nahoa sweet spot. We're talking about real waves here. If I have a wave that's one meter high, you want the period to be two seconds. But in general, our, the wave height when you're offshore is no less than like one, one meter really ever. So wave height and period, nailed that. This is just the basics. You can go and read a ton more online if you're really into this. Um, we might get into it in a later episode, but for now, just kind of keep to this rule of thumb. If the period is at least two times the wave height, it's okay, it's comfy-ish. If it's less, then you wanna think about which direction you're gonna be hitting those waves in and what side of the boat they're gonna be hitting because it could be pretty uncomfy if you're trying to sail upwind or even on the beam and, and anything less than this. But currents, we've been in these areas where currents have suddenly been like a part of our life. And up until this point, yeah, there's been currents, we notice them sometimes. Like seriously, nothing like what we just dealt with on this passage here up to Palau. 
we hit the equatorial countercurrent. So there's there's just different currents in different parts of the world, and sometimes you're sailing in areas where they are very important to know about. A couple things about currents. One, how they can impact the waves, because they have a huge impact on the waves. And two, what we think is the best way to get across them. So in this passage, we're basically facing what I think are three currents. This equatorial current and the equatorial countercurrent are the two main ones that are really pulling into our navigation. And then we're also going to see this northern uh, part come into play here and this is something to do with the North Pacific Ocean. So this has been a huge factor in what we've been looking at on this passage and the reason is these currents go insane. They get like up to like two and two plus knots. So let's look at some of the tools out there that show you where these currents actually are. We started off with Windy and we looked at this and it's Windy's pretty good. It's a free tool you can use on the internet but it wasn't enough for me to plan a proper route through where we wanted to go. What we've never used before is currents with predict wind. So let's switch to predict wind. And it's been completely accurate because we're halfway through this passage and we've hit the good current now. But we left from down here in caving. We had a few choices when we, when we left. We could have just taken a direct route all the way, you know, a straight rum line route from Papua New Guinea to Palau. We, we like to do that. That's like one of our favorite tactics in fast sailing. <laughs> we love the rum line. Ben and I are such like rum line. Actually, it's me, I'm an addict. But this was one of those cases when that probably was a terrible idea. So we had the current coming from the west and we had the wind coming from the northeast. This area was gonna have uncomfortable seas, okay? The other thing is, is that current pushes you. So we were trying to go up to Palau and the current was gonna be pushing us this way, right? So we had to figure out the best way for us to get from Papua New Guinea to Palau and at this point cross this line of horribleness. We looked at a lot of options. One was going like straight north and across and then kind of trying to hitch a ride up here after you break across this current. But what Predict Wind does that is so awesome is it takes into account the current and the wind and will help sort of plan a route for you. There's this equatorial current down here and you can see it, it's starting to go light blue. And it's crazy, if you mouse over it here, it tells you the speed. The, gr the colors mean the different speeds, starting at like zero knots with purple and then kind of creeping up to two knots with the green. And then it gets crazy, like over 10 knots is black. I haven't seen black where we're going, thankfully, that's good. Unless it's with you, that would be cool. Can you imagine going 10 knots? That'd be insane probably be scary. Okay, so let's get away, forget that part, Ben's gonna edit that out. So basically what we did is we kind of took our regular approach to this, which is kind of like rum line sailing, up until we hit the current. So this is us right here, and now we're like, those waves are getting bigger. Wow, we just slowed down a hell of a lot. And then we're like, all right, let's get across this nasty junk. And we just went straight at it. It was way more uncomfortable because you can tell that we basically turned our boat more into the wind, right? This is more downwind, this is more upwind. So we, we headed up and we decided to make, take the shortest line to cross this current. But basically it meant that this area here, from here to here, we had very uncomfortable sea state. It was awful. It was like coffee falling over, spilling into your fridge kind of awful. That happened, I promise you. If we continued to take the rum line, we would have been in this area for quite a lot longer. So we just shortened the distance. Let's, let's do a, like a simple example, which is kind of what we had with equatorial countercurrent on our way to plow here. And we'll just do it really kind of dumbed down. So we had the wind blowing from the right hand side of the board. And this is our, and the current, let's just say for examples purposes is coming exactly opposite the wind. It's not always the case, but this is the current. Now, check that out. They're fighting each other. And you know what happens to the waves when the current fights the wind? They get freaking huge. So instead of these nice, beautiful, spread out waves, we end up with waves that are like this. Whoa! In extreme conditions, you can get standing waves. Typically, it's not quite that bad. But keep in mind, you will see this. If the wind is against the current, you're gonna get big, crazy waves. That was an intense whiteboard session for me just now. The sun's gone down, oh, it's still pretty, but I'm sweating, like, whew, it's a lot of work holding that thing. We gotta come up with a better solution. And I think my mouth is dry, I need some sip of wine. Mm. Okay, you're all tired of hearing me talk. 
So the final thing I just want to mention is where you can get this information about currents, winds, etc. So all of this information is usually available through your local Met office, whatever it might be. In New Zealand they had a Met office, in Canada they have a Met office, uh, NOAA in America. And typically the Met office summarizes the buoy data, so it's current data. It's awesome. If you have a Predict Wind subscription, uh, we highly recommend getting that. We love it. Um, and they're fantastic. They have the currents and the winds and then they have the modeling on top of it and it's it's fantastic. You can get a free version, just download it. There's a link below, you can click on it, download it, check it out, play with it. So you can also check out Windy. Windy has waves and currents and wind. So the funny thing about these currents is that they move. So you wanna always be checking out where they currently are. The Gulf Stream moves, that's the other one we've encountered a lot of, and the equatorial countercurrent. It kind of goes up and down, it can dip below the equator, it can go above the equator, it can go all over the place, and it depends on the season. But if you are just looking at sort of to see what's where, what's happening where, pilot charts are a really great idea, to, are a really great place to start to just kind of get an idea of what the wind and the general currents are for a particular area in a particular season. Jimmy Cornell has a great summary of what the winds and the currents do sort of on a seasonal basis. The link the link is below. So now let's talk about local like today's weather. Like I'm leaving tomorrow and I want to know where that damn thing is so I get across it right. There's a few other sites. There's one called Passage Weather which we've used before. Windy is another one that has a currents layer but you might want to double check it with some of the others because it's sort of sometimes right. I know there's more out there and Ben will put a link below. Um, I'm just forgetting them at this very moment of time, I'm sorry. Finally, back to Ben. How's that? You're sweating. Is it hard being on TV? Must be the lights. <laughs> <laughs> it's hot tonight, there's no wind. Um, I've been holding the board and talking like a maniac, so yeah, I got a little sweaty tonight. So, am I glistening? I don't know, I'll put I, some I'm... more light on you. Now you're glistening. <laughs> oh, your cheek's glistening. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs>